And are your taxes about to go up? For the Inside Story, we took a field trip to Capitol Hill where Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell went on the record. Senator, nice to see you, sir. Good to be with you. All right, just to set the stage so that the viewers are cleared where we are is that as of January, if nothing is done, the Bush tax cuts expire, which means everybody's taxes goes up, right? Yeah, I mean, the, the current tax law has been in place for about 10 years, and what the majority envisions is raising taxes in the middle of a recession on the top two brackets, which, interestingly enough, cover 50% of small business income and about 25% of the workforce. Uh, we think that is a really bad idea. We don't think taxes ought to be increased in the middle of a recession for anyone, and we'll so argue when the debate occurs in September. All right, now, but as a, but right now, though, that, that's what the uh, President Obama wants and the Democrats in the House mm -hmm. and the Senate is to raise mm -hmm. those two brackets on, mm -hmm. on, a, on a limited number of taxpayers. But the fact is that right now, as, a, as we stand now, is that if nothing happens, everybody goes up in January. Yeah, if nothing happens at all, it'd be a disaster. You'd have a big tax increase on absolutely everybody. We don't think there ought to be a tax increase on anybody, uh, particularly in economic times like we face at the moment. I mean, it's hard to find an economist who thinks it's a good idea to raise taxes in the middle of a recession. And even though the administration argues it's not technically a recession, most people think unemployment up close to 10 percent is a recession. Now, a as a political matter, this is a little bit of a stumbling block for the Democrats because they have said that they, uh, President Obama said mm -hmm. when he ran for president, he would not raise taxes on people who make less than 250 mm -hmm. or $200,000 a year. Mm -hmm. So if nothing happens, that campaign promise has been violated. But the expectation is, is that the Democrats will do something between now and January. Well, we agree that we ought not to raise taxes on that group that they don't want to raise taxes on. But where we differ is we don't think we ought to raise taxes on anybody in the middle of a recession. And so we will have, in contrast to their proposal to raise taxes on 50 percent of small business income and impacting 25 percent of the workforce, an alternative that would not raise taxes on anyone. All right. And so that I understand the procedure. So between now and January, something must be done. And so when do you expect that at least there will be some, that they'll begin debating in earnest yeah. the issue of what happens with uh, even the upper part of the uh, I th I tax think, I think in September we're likely to have this uh, debate on the floor of the Senate. Um, and uh, is, today you met with the president? Mm-hmm. Uh, one on one? Yeah. Done it before? No, this was actually the first time uh, we've gotten together one-on-one. -on -one. He, he asked for the meeting. I was happy to go down, and we had a cordial discussion about a whole range of issues that we're dealing with and you know, trying to isolate places where we might have some agreement. And there are, there are areas where we could potentially reach agreement. I mean, he says he's for trade deals. Uh, so are we. We think free trade is helpful to America. Um, says he's for nuclear power. Most of my members are. Says he's for clean coal technology. We're for that. So I think there are some areas where we could uh, make progress on a bipartisan basis. We know where you agree, where you don't agree. We know the timeline. Um, so what's going to happen between now and well, we'll, January? We'll have the debate in September. We'll f figure out who prevails. Well, tell me what you think is going to happen. Well, what I hope we'll do is not raise taxes on anyone in the middle of a recession. I think it's a terrible idea. We're going to have that debate, interestingly enough, about six weeks before the election. We welcome the debate. We think it's a great time to be talking about uh, taxes, particularly when the other side wants to raise taxes in the middle of a recession. We think that's a terrible idea. And it's a debate we're looking forward to. Is there any chance this discussion, this debate, will be done between the midterm and January after the elections? Well, let's see what happens in September. I don't know how quickly what we end up deciding to do will move through, <clears throat> but the debate will be engaged in September. Whether it's finished in September is another matter. All right, here's the thing that's sort of distressing to me, is that yes, you tell me that it's going to begin in September, and I realize that you don't control the timetable, you're in the minority party, but it's not like these uh, tax uh, expiration of the tax code is any great surprise. We all knew for a long time that they're going to expire in January, and unless a decision is made between now and the midterms, uh, it, it almost feels like the American people are being had, because we want to know, what are you going to do? Well, they know what... Republicans would do. We would not raise taxes on anybody in the middle of a recession. I don't know why our friends in the majority put this issue off so long. Uh, we could have. We, we all knew it was coming. We all knew this big tax increase was coming unless we acted. I would have preferred to act sooner, but as you pointed out, I don't set the agenda. I'm not in the majority.
the uh, House is going back in session on Monday or mm -hmm. Tuesday on a, an unrelated issue. It seems to me is that on such an important issue where so many small business are, businesses are waiting to see mm -hmm. what the federal government is going to do on taxes, is that the longer the House and the Senate have this discussion, the longer it sort of puts off making important business decisions so that we can get the economy revved up. So I know you, gotta, you deserve a vacation. I know a lot of you have been working mm -hmm. on this vacation, but couldn't you get started a little sooner? As I just said, I would like to have had this debate much earlier. You know, the president had a meeting with a bunch of small businessmen a couple of weeks ago and women and I asked them why they weren't hiring and they listed the various items and interestingly enough was his agenda. You know, the health care bill, impending tax increases. Uh, no wonder they aren't uh, hiring because the federal government is throwing a lot of new uh, regulation and taxation and complexity uh, at them. Uh, for example, under the health care bill, every business that now does uh, business with a vendor of $600 or above has got to send out a 1099 form to the IRS and to the vendor. I mean, enormous amount of paperwork and complexity has been created by the health care bill. Now they've got the possibility of tax increases. It's no wonder that businesses are not expanding. The, the president's uh, job-killing agenda has been a big factor there. Well, when I talk to small business people, they're so busy telling me about the taxes and the uncertainty, whether it's about the tax code or the availability mm -hmm. of credit or whatever it is. They spend all their time telling me about mm -hmm. the problems they're having because of Washington, that they, right. they're not telling me about their product. Their attention is here on Washington, and it seems to be moving very slowly. And unless we can move it faster, any chance of a, a quicker recovery well, is inhibited. Moving faster in the wrong direction is not helpful. Well, at least, it mean, gives well them, at least it gives them certainty and direction. Well, they've got a good deal of certainty, and, and it's causing them to hold back. They're anticipating tax increases. They know they've got health care taxes. They know they've got health care regulations. All of this there is causing them to pull back and not expand, and that is exacerbating the economic situation. Did you get it today meeting with the president that he had any sense that sort of the molasses pace at making these decisions was having any sort of impact on small businesses? I think they really believe they've done the right thing. Um, we look at the situation, we see the government running, you know, banks, insurance companies, car companies, nationalizing the student loan business, taking over health care. We, we think that's the reason the economy uh, continues to limp along and not break out. Uh, I think the president's agenda has been a job-killing agenda. And then people look at the, the debt. You know, they passed a budget that would double the national debt in five years and triple it in ten. They look at the government itself, adding a quarter of a million new employees with borrowed money, uh, passing borrowed money down to states to keep them from having to lay, lay off state employees, which is what the stimulus did. People are looking at all that, Greta, and their conclusion is, I better not expand my business because this is too much coming my way to absorb. One last question. When you walked out of the Oval Office and left the White House today, did you think, you know, mm -hmm. this has been a great discussion, you know, we're, we're really going to move forward, we're going to be able to work together? Yeah, well, what I said to the President, it was a shame that he had to spend his birthday with me while his wife was in <laughs> Spain. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you, Senator, and uh, we'll be watching to see what, uh, what, this, uh, what Washington does with all our taxes. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you, Greta. Here's a look at what's coming up on this show.